Hey, everybody. Welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. My name is Chris. I'll be your host today. I'm super excited about this episode because we're digging into, again, another one of these topics I feel like is super important right now. We have with us Bobby Hobby and Chris Keel again. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Doing very good. Thank you, Chris. Good, good. And then we've got with us the uh, founder of Family ID, Greg Gunn. Greg, where are you uh, coming to us from, actually? Where are you in the world? I'm actually, uh, in, I, I live in Oklahoma City. Our offices are in Edmond, Oklahoma, uh, just a suburb there of Oklahoma City. And right this moment, I'm actually at a place called Carlton Landing. Uh, it's my wife's birthday today, and we are celebrating at a friend's lake house. So uh, we're in a beautiful place right now. Um, beautiful weather. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. That's good. I am still here, even though my camera stopped working. So I will uh, fiddle with that. But I think what would be awesome is let's start off while I'm playing with my camera. The, the, the wonderful things of technology. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> While I'm playing with my camera, Greg, why don't you give us a background of what Family ID is? I know for some of the people listening right now, they've heard of it before, but a lot haven't. So if you yeah. could take a second, kind of let us know, that would be awesome. And I will I'll fiddle with my camera. All right. Yeah. We go Family ID. The ID stands for Intentional Direction. So Family Intentional Direction uh, really was started when, uh, back in 1997, the associate pastor at our church was absent one Sunday. The next week he was back, and I said, David, hey, man, where, where were you last week? I missed you. He said, well, my wife and I were on our annual family goal-setting weekend. And I said, oh, what? He said, yeah, this is our fifth year. We go away once a year. We write goals for our marriage, goals for each other. We have, you know, he had five children under 12. I said, he said, we write goals for each of our kids. Um, we also look at our family vision statement and our family mission statement. And, and we kind of evaluate, did we, did we just claim that those statements or did we actually live them out over the year? I'm telling you guys, I mean, I was about to pass out. I was, I was, a, I was a business owner at the time. Uh, I'd owned a business uh, for 17 years. We were a uh, kind of a crazy goal setting uh, business. We, we required everyone to have their goals, uh, their production goals. We, we, were, uh, we had a financial services firm. Uh, all of our salespeople, we, we took them to every self-improvement course you could go to. And uh, we had a book of the month club. We wanted people to read uh, books to get to, uh, to, to, to improve themselves and so forth. And we were, we were you know, kind of on the cutting edge of all that. And when he said, Greg, uh, I, I, I go away once a year and do a, an annual family goal setting weekend, wow. I'm going, dude, I would easily do that for my business. That's exactly, you know, we get our team together and our, our, our leadership team, we go away, we do a strategy meeting. We, you know, we try it in business. We try to leave almost nothing to chance, right? Yet when it came to my family, the thought of doing that for my family hadn't been within a thousand miles of my head. And I, I said, stop, David, stop. I can't, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> okay, buddy, you got to write me out an agenda of what you do on this annual family goal setting weekend. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard of, you know, and I'm telling you guys, it just, it revolutionized my life because I had never thought about having this kind of intentional direction for my family, I, I don't know what it was. I guess I thought everything I wanted to have happen at home was somehow going to happen by accident, yeah. and um, and with with no no intention, right? No, yeah. uh, no plan, no purpose, that kind of thing, you know. And dude, I can't tell you how that for, for Ron and I, it changed everything. We, um, I began to become somewhat of a multi generational thinker. Uh, for the first time in my life, I, I, I had never thought beyond my life, you know, uh, what, because the Lord's coming back, right? I, I grew up in a faith tradition. The Lord's going to return long before I ever get married, let alone have kids, let alone get old, right? And right. so uh, this just changed the, the whole direction of my business. It changed wow. the direction of my family. Mm -hmm. uh, and so D David just wrote me out the agenda and we set a date. We drove. 
uh, an hour and a half away, locked ourselves in a hotel room, and literally out of the end of our pen came this family vision statement. Um, and at the time, we didn't know anything about how do you write a mission statement for your family or a vision statement, or how do you discover your core values? You know, I didn't know any of that at the time, uh, but I had read a book um, by Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. Um, and one of those habits was that highly effective people write a family mission statement. So he had also done a little audio book on that. And so I ordered that uh, before I left to go uh, on this family vision weekend. Um, and that's what we called it in, in the beginning was family vision weekend. Um, yeah. And we, we wrote uh, that, that vision statement came out of our pen and, and it took us some, literally another three or four years to finally formalize a family vision statement, a mission statement and the core values. So that's how that started us on this journey wow. in, in 1997. And wow. um, it's been now, it's just been unbelievable what God has done with that uh, in, in, in the last 20 years. Wow. That is so awesome. I, it is amazing to me. Um, I just hearing you talk about this, it is amazing to me how much focus, um, especially business people, entrepreneurs and, and so right. forth will put right. into the business side of their life or, or even their job or whatever, sure. and not even realize it's not that they're purposely neglecting, right? Like you weren't purposely neglecting. It's that it, not it's all. not even, we're not even thinking about that. That's, right. a, that's amazing. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the truth is we, you know, we're not, yeah, we, we as, we as, I was a, I was a believer. I, I went to church every time the doors were open type thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, if, if you were to ask me what's more important to you, your family or your business, I mean, even if it weren't true, I would say, Oh, my family is much more important to me than my business, you know? Uh, and, and, and yet we, I, there was, it's like if, if, if we were going to be put on trial, for putting our family above our business, what evidence would we show Oof. that we do that, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and I thought, well, the least I could do is have a family vision statement, a family mission statement and core values in writing and up in my house. Maybe maybe a jury might convict me <laughs> right, of uh, putting my family right. ahead of my business. But, you know, so that's, that's, where, that's where I feel like a lot of people today in ministry and in business um, we just have this tendency, like the, you know, the opposite of the good shepherd, uh, the good shepherd had a hundred sheep, one got lost. He left the 99, he abandoned the 99 to go find the one. Uh, and we in business and ministry have a tendency to pour our guts out for the 99 and neglect the one, right? Yeah. Our marriage, our family, right? Wow. Wow. It's like Chris, Bobby, thoughts on this? Like, this is just like nailing it. <laughs> go, Chris. You want to go first, or you want me? <laughs> well, so I, I love this, Greg. I, I totally connect with this idea that I feel like it's crazy to me how much, um, you know. At, at one point, I was I was reading about all the successful companies in the U.S. and they were comparing them to companies in Asia, you know, and how in early in the 1920s, 1930s, American companies would kind of be created with this 100-year plan. Yeah. Um, now, that's recently actually changed, you know, and you see that in the culture of America, like these CEOs kind of come and go, and they realize that they're going to be very... But in Japan, to be hired, you had to basically, as a CEO, you had to come and bring, like, what your 100-year vision would be for that company. Wow. You know, we put all this emphasis on what does this look like um, in 100 years, you know, and probably the thing that is the most... Uh, meaningful discipleship that any of us will ever do in our lives is most likely going to be with our families, you know, and you're so distracted in that for the most part and they get half of our attention, not a lot, not a lot of our focus. It seems like right. uh, and we really, you know, if you asked most families to produce a vision or a mission, mission statement, they would have no idea. They would have no idea what the core idea is for the most part. Um, I love that story. You were telling me, Greg, maybe you could tell, you could tell that story. It was that biblical story. Um, that you were talking about the, that that family that wouldn't drink wine, right? Uh, right. That, I forget where that was, but that was okay, a great yeah. story. Yeah, it's in Jeremiah uh, chapter thirty-five. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah thirty-five, 
and it's the story of the Rechabites. And uh, their great grandfather's name was Rechab, and he was alive during the time of Ahab and Jezebel. And Jeremiah uh, invited the, the the leaders of the of the Rechabite family to come into the temple in one of the side rooms, and he set wine out before them, and then said, "Hey, I've got a word from the Lord for you." Uh, but first, hey, yeah, you guys go ahead, ha have a drink of that wine. And the Rechabites looked at each other and said, hey, we're, we're, we're not going to drink that. He said, well, why not? He said, well, because our great grandfather, Jonadab, gave us these three commands that we are not to drink wine, we're not to own land, and we're not to grow crops. <laughs> and we, that, that, that was to go for us, our children, and our children's children forever. And because we did that, when the when the when Nebuchadnezzar came uh, into the land and uh, uh, destroyed the temple and took everyone captive, uh, because we didn't own any land, we didn't grow any crops, we uh, we didn't have anything to defend. We rolled up our tents and we moved out of town, so uh, our family was preserved. And so Jeremiah said, "Thank you," because this was a test to see if you would disobey uh, those commands that your father, come to find out, gave them. 200 years earlier and what just that that was the first scripture that's what Rhonda and i on our on our first family vision weekend when when we went away we read jeremiah chapter 35 and we asked um how in the world did this did this family pass these three simple commands to every generation of their family um and and here they are living it out as if it if, if you know as if they'd gotten it you know, two days ago, uh, and Jeremiah was just blown away. And he said, God wants to use the, your family as an example to all of Israel, who's had the prophets uh, say to them every year uh, at, you know, at Passover or, uh, you know, know the Lord and follow him and walk with God, you know, and here your, your, your family gives these simple instructions. And you guys have followed them perfectly now for, wow. for 200 years. So we just said, Lord, would you give Ron and I, would you give us uh, the gun family version of uh, own no land, grow no crops and drink no wine? You know, God didn't have anything against owning land. You know, what, what was the promised land all about? He wasn't mm -hmm. against people growing crops, you know, uh, or drinking wine in moderation. <laughs> but, um, you know, I said, Lord, what, what would preserve the gun family alive? Uh, and for, for generations to come and what could we pass to every wow. generation that that would be simple and they would uh, our, our all of our descendants would get it if the lord were to tarry another 200 years what documents would i want my family to have what would i want my future generations to get um and and it would make sense to them and they could they could live it out so um wow. we came up with the gun family three and then we begged we said because at the end of that chapter 35, there was a blessing that, that Jeremiah gave to the Rechabite family that there will always be a godly descendant to, to, to serve before the Lord. And we said, Lord, we want that same kind of blessing to be on the Gunn family. And uh, literally, we had no idea that out of the end of our pen came this vision statement, laying the foundations for many godly generations. So we wanted to like Rahab did for the Rechabite family, he laid a foundation for many godly generations to come. And, and so we said, okay, we want to, that's our vision. We want to lay, we want every generation of the Gunn family to be busy about laying a foundation in their generation for many godly generations to come. Wow. That is, that is inspiring. I, I feel like, it's a message that has been lost. Like I, I really do feel just listening to you talk about this. I do feel like it's one of those things that the enemy has kind of sneakily come in and gotten families off track simply by having them be distracted from paying attention to the things that the exact things you're talking about. Do you, do you agree with that? That it's, it's a, it's yeah, a yeah. I, I really believe it is. I, I yeah. you know, um, if you think about in, in the Bible, um, how much of the scripture is written about people just knowing the name of their, of their 
of their ancestors. You know, we as a culture know so little about our ancestors. Uh, we, we're it's just it's, a, it's like unbelievable. And 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 biblically knowing the name, just knowing their names, were like the most important thing you could know. Um, because if you don't know where you come from, you can't really figure out where you are and you definitely can't, you can't determine where you're going. And, and that's, I believe that's what's happened, especially in, wow. in, in Christian circles, simply because, you know, we've kind of fallen into that, the, the thought that, you know, we're, you know, the Lord's, the Lord's coming back soon. And, and I believe he is. And, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to in any way discount that, but, um, man, it's caused us to become so short-sighted in our thinking. We just don't think, uh, multi-generationally. We think very, uh, very, very one-dimensional. And so I really think that, that by us kind of, um, uh, hearkening back, and that's something else that I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about now is discovering who my ancestors were, um, uh, doing some ancestry, uh, I finally set up an account with Ancestry.com, and I'm looking at all the the stuff. And then there's so many, so so many incredible things you can learn about what's in your DNA, and and what do you, what are your core core values? What do you really, and you see it in generational uh, terms when you when you figure out what your ancestry is. And, and so I, I really do believe that the enemy has has blinded us. Uh, in, in that, and, and I think another area is in our sibling relationships. Um, Satan really owns all unresolved sibling conflict. It's it's wow. his greatest tool throughout history uh, to 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 destroy what God meant for good, and that's that's very strong, powerful sibling relationships. So, um, yeah, think about it. You know how much wow. of the Genesis is written about unresolved sibling conflict, right? Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Bobby and Chris, I'd love to get you to weigh in on this, the tactic, you know, of the enemies using and, and how it ties into the importance of understanding as a family unit, like, yeah. you know, where you're going. Yeah, that's so good, Greg. I just appreciate you uh, setting that as a priority for your own family and then teaching others to do the same. So I'm super interested in the rewards that you've seen. Yeah. So you, you had sort of life before that, and then you've had life after that. So tell us very, some God very, stories. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Number one, um, so we came up, we started praying about, all right, Lord, what are the gun family three instructions we want every generation to get? Not only do we want a, a family mission statement uh, and a family vision statement, and, and then we came up with five family core values. Um but what are the three instructions we want everyone to get? Number one instruction is that we want every family member to see their family as their first and most important ministry and their first and most important disciples. Now, not their only ministry. I believe we're all going to be involved in multiple ministries. Um, and we're also going to do our best to disciple many people. But um, we don't want to neglect the first and most important ministry and the first and most important disciples being our family. Second instruction we want every generation to get would be that uh, they would be heavily involved in helping their children and grandchildren discover who they're supposed to marry because who you marry affects what? What does who you marry affect? Everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> just, just everything. Okay. <laughs> You know, there couldn't be a decision you make that has a greater impact on everything in your life than who you marry. So yet we live, of course, you know, when I went to my mom, I said, Mom, how will I know when I've met the right one for me? And she said, I was, I was 19. I just had broken up with this girl. I was heartbroken. I said, Mom, how will I know? I didn't think my dad, I didn't think my dad would know. So I, I, I didn't ask him. Okay, Mom, how do I know? How, what, how will I know when I met the right girl for me? And she said, honey, You'll just know. Mom, is, is that all we got? I, I'll just know. I, Mom, I'm 19. I don't know. Come here from Sikkim. I'm, I'm an idiot. Okay. You're saying, I, how many agree we got to do better than you'll just know? Right? One of the most important decisions of your life. So anyway, second most important thing we want every generation of our family to do 
is to is to is to be heavily involved in helping their children discover who they're supposed to marry. Now, you know, of course, most parts of the world they arrange the marriages, right? I mean, that's probably the most you could do, but I don't think we're going to go there. All right. What can we do? Number one, we can start praying for our future daughter-in-law or son-in-law's parents, right? I mean, who's going to have more influence on that on that son, son-in-law, daughter-in-law that's going to marry into your family uh, than, than their parents and, and then their grandparents. I mean, grandparents have got more influence in their little finger than mom and dad have in their whole body. And so why aren't we praying yeah, I was just thinking, why am I not praying for the grandparents and their influence? That they'll take a, you know, they'll just be t- totally, you know, involved in 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 speaking into that that grandson, granddaughter, uh, that boy or girl's best friend. I mean, who's going to be more influential in a kid's life than their best wow. friend, right? Why in the world aren't we praying for their favorite coach, their favorite movie, their favorite book? You know, mm-hmm. like God, man, we need to. Wow. I thought, dude, I'm, I'm like, I haven't been praying for any of that. I hadn't even thought about praying for any of that. You know, yeah. I, I want my kids to marry a believer, right? But, man, I just thought, whew, we got to get to work, right? We got to be heavily involved in helping our children and grandchildren discover who they're going to marry. Uh, and then, um, a third, is that we would put an end to unresolved sibling conflict, that we would truly treat our siblings better than our best friend. And so that, that really kind of changed the direct, you know, for our family. Ron and I have seven children. Uh, they're they're all boys, <laughs> except for five of them. <laughs> Actually, five girls, and two boys. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, sibling sibling conflict and sibling relationships were, you know, a huge part of our our family growing up life, right? And so we said, look. Uh, the gun family, we treat each other and our siblings better than our best friend. That's, that's the standard. And you know what? That has just been a blessing. Now, of course, it hadn't been perfect. We have, you know, we got all the same exact problems everybody else has got. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we live on the planet Earth and we deal with uh, all the stuff that's going on in our culture and that kind of thing. But that has really been a blessing. And, and our kids have grown up because I, I grew up in the opposite family. I grew up in a family where we were mean to each other. We hurt each other's feelings. I drove my siblings outside our family to get their needs met. I drove them to their friends to get accepted, to get, you know, uh, to get encouraged and that kind yeah. of thing. Um, you know, we were a normal family. We, you know, we had, I, I had an older sister and two younger brothers. And yet um, we were very, very peer dependent. We were really dependent on our, on our friends. Um, and so I wanted to change that for my family. I wanted my children to truly be each other's best friend. And because we just held that up as a standard, uh, and it doesn't mean we didn't have conflict. We still, kids still were met, mean to each other, whatever. But we kept holding that up as a standard and it really changed uh, our family. It really has been a blessing uh, in our family. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Chris. Hey. I know you've got some questions. <laughs> well, Greg, I would love to see. So what happens? Okay, so you've got this kind of philosophy around it. What happens when you infuse this into a family? What are some stories that you've seen outside of yours? Okay. A family kind of takes hold of this. Like what's yeah, what's what's possible, you know, for a family when you start thinking like this? That's great. In fact, I have a good friend that I met um, at a conference. I was uh, there um uh, at, at, and he, he had a booth and uh, his name is Lonnie Ginger. Lonnie is a uh, CEO of a company, Wilkinson Corporation out of Yakima, Washington. And he was probably the most intentional business leader. And he had actually had a company called uh, Business Advantage where he helped companies write their company vision statement, their mission and their core values. And so I went up to him and said, Lonnie, um, you know, my name's Greg Gunn. I, what, what do you do? And he told me, and I said, Hey, do you have a family vision statement and a mission statement in core values? And he goes, well, no, but you know, my family kind of knows what our vision is and kind of knows what our, I said, well, do you have it in writing? And he, well, no, but, uh, I said, so, so what you're saying is a company, a business needs a mission and a vision and everybody in the organization needs to know what it is. They need to recruit to the vision and, and, uh, they need to uh, make decisions based on the core values, so forth. 
but somehow your family is just going to kind of know it. He goes, okay, you got me. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Does family ID have a, have a, 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 have a vision statement and a mission and core values? And I said, no, but you know, family ID kind of knows what our vision is and what our, he goes, Greg, Greg, stop it. You, you don't have it in writing. No, I don't. He said, I go, okay, Lonnie, you got to, uh, I'll, 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 if, if you'll teach me everything about how to do this for, for family ID, I'll teach you all how to do this for your family. And I'm telling you, Lonnie has implemented this in his family better than anyone I've ever seen. Wow. He does, a, he does like two annual family meetings a year. His, his children now are grown. They have, they're married and he's now got grandchildren and they meet every, every year. They literally have an onboarding process for the spouses that marry into their family. Okay. I mean, they onboard them to the mission, to the vision, like any great company would do for anyone that they hire as a CFO or a CEO or, um, you know, somebody that is going to really be in charge of of taking the company to the next level. Um, They onboard them to the mission, to what is our history? Oh my gosh, I thought, man, how intentional could anyone get? And, And Lonnie has kind of, you know, broken the, the mold. Uh, I thought I was intentional, <laughs> and and Lonnie just blew, blows me out of the water, and and so we've just seen so much healing and health happen when a family just. And in fact, most families say, "Greg, we're not applying everything we learned from Family ID. We're just we're probably applying ten percent of what we learned." And I said, "Dude, that's powerful. That's so incredible. Don't don't look at ten percent as a failure." No, yeah. look at it as an incredible success. Right. That you're doing more this year than you did last year. You're being more intentional than your family that you grew up in. And then your children and grandchildren are going to do more to be intentional with their family. So look at that as a gigantic success yeah. uh, by just applying, just writing it and putting it up in your house. If that's all you ever do with your mission and vision, is that it's gonna it, it's gonna be an advertisement to your family. People are gonna come to your home and go, "What's what's that piece of artwork there yeah. on the wall with your exactly with your five core values on it? You know what's that about?" And yeah. it's gonna have a giant impact. Wow, I it's just uh, I feel like what you're talking about is so relevant for right now. I, Bobby, I, <clears throat> I I'm I feel like there's something right on the tip of your tongue <laughs> that you've got to to add into this one, Bobby. Yeah, just love the conversation. Again, I, I think that there's someone watching here that is saying, gosh, uh, I love this. What are my next steps? How do I make family yeah. a priority? They're high drivers. Their business is going amazing. And they're listening to this going, OMG, I need to reprioritize. And so first steps, next steps, keep it simple. How do we do that? Sure. Yeah, we have a, we have a, a streaming online uh, family ID workshop. Uh, we have a faith-based version and a values-based version that we use with government uh, uh, programs um, in Oklahoma, the Department of Human Services. Um, uh, the, the foster care system uses our, our faith-based curriculum, and it walks you through step-by-step step, uh, in about three and a half hours how to write a family vision statement how to write a family core values. Um, We have a family ID app that we have a lot of free downloads to download an annual family goal setting weekend, Uh, just an agenda of how to do that. Uh, We have a team captain training program for the the older siblings in the family are are the team captain, mom and dad are the coaching staff uh, and their younger siblings uh, they are going to be the team captain and they're going to understand in this curriculum how to, and it's free. You just download it for free. Uh, the, the, we, we have a workshop um, uh, online. It's $160, $159 for the, for the streaming online, how to write a family mission statement. And when you go through the workshop, you will, end, you will come out of it with a vision, mission, core values, and your family ID, your family slogan. Uh, just like uh, Nike's slogan is just do it. Uh, what can Brown do for you is UPS, right? We, uh, we help each family create your own slogan that, 
that creates this healthy family identity. Because where family identity is strong, peer pressure is weak. Where family identity is weak, peer pressure is insurmountable. And so uh, by by us creating this, this, just starting down this path of creating a family identity, it is amazing the problems that it it cures um, just just by itself. It's just so powerful. So that's the, the key is to start out with a vision. Vision creates passion. Show me someone that's got no passion. I'll show you someone that don't have a passion problem. They got a vision problem, right? Yeah. Vision creates passion. And when you write a family vision statement and start be- thinking about this, um, it really creates a passion uh, in and of itself. Passive passion creates discipline and discipline gives you the courage to totally commit uh, and change the world. So uh, I, I really believe that that having access to this walk you through step by step. The only the only place I've ever found one um, and, and, and is is uh, uh, is through family ID. I, I haven't been able to find them. I'm sure there are some others out there, you know, writing a family vision, mission and values isn't rocket science, you know, so uh, it, it's, it's being done. Uh, but we're, we, we, we tried to create a simple step-by-step process. Even children really get into this in our, in our workshops, in our live workshops. And we would love to do a live workshop, uh, for, for anyone that's interested. Um, uh, if you can get 10, uh, 10 or 12 couples together, uh, we can come and do a, do a workshop. That's awesome. Do you, I have a qu- one question, Greg. Have you ever seen like conflict in the values? Like how, like, like a value to one person maybe might not be for another person. Like, oh, that's you, a good question. <laughs> like yeah. I mean, like how do you how do you kind of wrestle through that stuff? That's that's a great question because we have lots of families that have family members that are faith uh, driven by their faith, and others that are that don't have that. They're, they're just not they're just not driven by that. And so there are some conflicts there. But here's yeah. what we found that. Um, we want each each of our each of our children who have a spouse uh, or, or a significant other. We want them to work on their own family mission and vision and values. Okay, um, and here's what we found: even in our children and, and now our our children that are married and have their own families, we see a little bit of the DNA of our vision and mission in theirs, even though it's completely different. Um, but I tell you what's so powerful is that every family we found, I, I, I'm, I would even venture to say, if you were the head of a drug cartel somewhere on the earth and you, you wanted to create a family vision statement, all right, uh, there are certain things that you would just put in there. Like we want to love each other. I mean, uh, even though we sell, you know, we sell <laughs> drugs and we do, and we do prostitution and human trafficking. Okay. Uh, but for our family, we want we want mm-hmm. unity, right? We want to be unified, or uh, we want to uh, we want to you know take care of each other, or we want to whatever. I mean, there are just amazing how uh, people, no matter where they come from, where, what their background is, nobody <laughs> says, you know what? I want a horrible family. I want I right. want us to be in conflict all the time. Right, I want right. everybody to be strung out on drugs. Yeah, <laughs> no, it doesn't happen. Okay. No, uh, no one wants that. No, yeah, one exactly. Wants. And so it's amazing how there's so, literally no matter what you what your background is and or what your uh, what your faith is at, or, or, or none. Um, it's amazing how everyone seems to kind of gravitate to these things of uh, we're going to treat each other with kindness, you know, or yeah. uh, we're going to let everyone be heard. We want to let everyone's voice. Everyone has a voice here, and everyone's voice. Uh, is important and, and, and should be listened to. Uh, and so anyway, those kind of things we've seen uh, now close to 30,000 families have gone through wow. this, this workshop. Awesome. Uh, we have it now in, in five languages. Uh, we're in 21 countries with a facilitator. Uh, and, that, and we would love for people to sign up as a facilitator to facilitate these workshops for us to really take it around the world. We know we can't we can't do it one workshop at a time. We've got to get it. We had to get it streaming, and then we have to get uh, people who are who, who say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna add this to my toolbox, and I'm gonna teach uh, uh, how how to write a family mission statement. And we would love for them uh, to use our material. 
uh, become certified. We have a little LMS system that people can get uh, certified to use the family ID material um, and, and all, the, all, the, all the downloads that are available to them uh, through our app, the Family ID app. Uh, we'd love for you to download that and, uh, and check us out on, online, uh, family-id.com. Uh, we got lots of resources and we'd love to, love to, to partner with you, uh, in, in helping others write this vision and mission. Yeah. Now, Greg, that brings me to a question because I know a lot of people might be listening to this and they're immediately have categorized everything you're saying to someone else's box, right? Like, oh, that's for somebody that's just got married or they have little kids or, or whatever. And I'm Good single word. or that is I so am, rude. yeah, or I'm, or I'm older and my kids are out of the house. Right. Can you speak into that? Cause yeah. I, I think that yeah. that's a, another that's a area. Word. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you, Chris. Cause you know, when I, I that is really truly um, people do, they pigeonhole this idea immediately. They, most people go, okay, my kids are already grown. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm too late. They say that. Oh, dude, I'm too late. Uh, my kids, <laughs> right. And I say, wait, stop. Look, if you're single, I'm telling you, if you want to become, if you're a single guy and you want to become a chick magnet for the <laughs> right kind of chick, okay, you need to write a family vision statement, mission statement. Come on. You know, Let's because go. the average girl out there, when she meets a guy, he's about as deep as a piece of paper. You know how deep a piece of paper is, right? I mean, that, that's, that's about not, it. is it not deep, Greg? <laughs> the, the, the average dude you're going to meet. Now, when, when this girl meets you, all right, and you got a family vision statement, a mission yeah. statement, she's going to go, oh my God, this Good dude is girl. deep, right? <laughs> now, now, it might repel the wrong kind of girl. She go, oh my gosh, a single guy with a a vision statement and a mission statement for his family. Oh, what a weirdo. Okay. But you're, you're going to repel the wrong kind of girl and you're going to attract the right kind of girl. Uh, with the same with you girls. Hey girls, if you're a single girl, if you put in writing a vision and a mission and core values, the kind of guy that you're going to attract with that wow. is going to blow your mind. You're talking about a dude that's going to serve you. He's going to be a servant leader. He's going to be a boundary setter. He's going to be a proven provider. I promise you, you're going to get those three things out of a, out of a guy. If you've already thought through what kind of vision, mission, multi-generationally, you know, and of course you parents who have young children or, or you're just married and you're saying, you know, or, or you're dating and you're going, Hey, I wonder what, I wonder if I'm really compatible with this dude. Y'all sit down together and work on a mission statement and a vision statement. And you yeah. guys, you guys go through and negotiate and come up with, five core values that you can agree upon. Oh my gosh. Talk about a confirmation. You ought to marry this person, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. is to go through that process. And then of That's course, amazing. those, those who have parents of children, young children, dude, you definitely got to have a vision. My gosh, mm, you got to get everybody on. in your family on the same page, reading off the same sheet of music. Uh, or you guys aren't, this world has got so much. I mean, how much money does Hollywood and how much money does the video game industry have to spend to capture the heart and the imagination of our kids? I mean, they got the smartest people in the world go to go to work for those industries to capture the heart and the imagination. Social media, there's a thousand engineers behind the screen of, of, of your kid's phone um, figuring out a way to capture the heart and the imagination of your kids. And you know what? Yeah. The world cannot compete with you if you put together a vision, mission, core values. I'm just telling you, they can't compete. Your, your vision will capture the heart of the kids. I'm serious. And grandparents, grandparents, you got more influence in your little finger than mom and dad have in their whole body. My, my <laughs> grandfather, my grandfather, John Diffie, is the most influential man in my life. And wow. yet I have not one sheet of paper that he wrote. I don't have one recording of his voice. I, how sad. And we live in a, we live in a time when we can record our family uh, uh, stories. We can record our grandparents speaking into the camera and, and, and looking in through their eyeballs into their soul. I mean, gosh, grandparents, you have, look, you say, Greg, my, I'm a grandparent. My kids aren't interested in this stuff. I mean, they're so not interested. You can't believe it. You're not going to write this stuff to them. You're writing it to a grandson or a great grandson, yeah. maybe a granddaughter that you'll never meet, 
That's right. You're writing this Come to on. them, and they're so interested, they're about to die. All right? They'd give anything. It would be the most valuable thing they owned to know wow. what you believed, what you stood for. I mean, gosh, this is the key for you to be able to pass this to every generation. And I, and I think it's one of the most important things we can do as a family and for our family. Wow. Um, so I know I just, I just gave you guys. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I I mean, that's so good. I, I, I feel like there's never been a more important time. And uh, you mentioned something um, that I think is very profound that maybe not everybody realized. This right. is the first time in history where we can do this. 50 years ago, if the grandparents wanted to pass a mess, a video message on to their great grandchildren and their great great grandchildren, they couldn't. Right. And now today, right. you're carrying in your pocket right now, you have zero excuse, zero. You have zero excuse because now in your pocket, you have a full video studio that, oh, can, that you can do this. And I just feel like there's so many people that may be listening to this right now that are like, oh man, I have. I, it's too late. I've missed it. And what I hear you saying, Greg, is it's not too late it, uh, at all. In fact, right. the absolute best time, you know, the, the Chinese proverb, the best time to plant the trees 20 years ago, but the second best time is now. Right. That's what I hear you saying, Greg, is the best so time true. is now. It's right now. Forget about that you didn't do it before. Right now is so the So true. Time. So true. But th think about this, Chris. Uh, how many pictures do you have of your great-grandfather? probably five or ten exactly exactly like five or one right yeah. today yeah. we can get a hundred thousand pictures of our of our parents and grandparents yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying i mean we have never yeah. had a time and then how do you how do you log all that it almost becomes right. too much you've got right. too many pictures you got too many videos how do yeah. we even tag them so that and so we we've literally got a software program now where it's called family arc and it's an archive of everything and you can tag everything and, it, wow. and, it, and it's oh, encrypted um, you know people say well greg i've got facebook look you don't own a single picture that's on facebook you don't yeah, own right. it it's not yours they own it the minute you put it on facebook that's somebody right. else owns your pictures okay so you need to have a place where you can store all of this and have it in a place where you can retrieve it um, and you can get it. It's like, you know, uh, you're storing something in a, in a hundred thousand square foot warehouse. How would you find it? It's, yeah. it's, it's all stacked in there, you know? So, yeah. 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 Greg, it's so good. So we're, we're, we're running out of time, but I'd love to do two things uh, because we're short on time. Chris, I'd love it if you would kind of lay the landscape for this event that's coming up. Greg is going to be one of our amazing speakers mm -hmm. at this event that is coming up this weekend. You absolutely, definitely need to attend a digital event, so you have no excuse not yeah. to click the link and register. So if you could do that. And then, Bobby, I'm really feeling like if you could pray over um, Greg and Family ID and everything that they're doing, but in addition to that, the people that are going to hear this message, you know, today, live, in the future, 10 years from now, that they yeah. would not just let this pass by, but that they would dig into um, understanding and stepping into the family side of all the things that, like Greg, you mentioned in the beginning, that we do as business people, but we just kind of don't even think about the importance of doing doing them from a family perspective yeah. so chris if you could lay the foundation and then yeah. if you could pray that'd be amazing chris can i just jump in real quick and say yeah, something absolutely. before chris k goes hey sure. listen um for those of you that are listening uh and maybe you, you you don't have a big family maybe uh you're a ceo and you're thinking about mm -hmm. your company uh mm -hmm. you're listening to this and you're going wow my company is my family right now uh, where Becky and I were growing our organization, that's yeah. where we went for growing culture. We went to loving your kids on purposes training. We went through oh. growing your family uh, yeah. because really that's what you're doing anywhere you're creating culture. So as they were saying, don't uh, X yourself out of the game just because you might not have uh, a family or siblings or whatever. This okay. culture dynamic is perfect for growing any organization, any culture, any place where you want kingdom dynamics. Uh, so that's what I'm hearing you guys say. It reaches far beyond. And honestly, I, 
I did. I drank the Kool-Aid on it. I just learned early on that if you're going to create culture, the best place to learn even for business is to go get family ID training, things like that. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, Bobby. Um, so yeah, the we're doing an event this weekend. It's going to be awesome. We have so many great, amazing speakers. Drake is one of them. Um, we've got some stuff on marriage. We've got some stuff on how to think generationally. We've got some stuff on how to like disciple your family. Um, and what I love about what Bobby just said is that there's crossover in business. Most everyone who's doing leadership um, in family right now has a past experience in business or some kind of like organizational aspect of life. And I think that's actually really interesting. It's like those two, they're very synonymous to be able to run a, a good business and a great family. So we're doing that this weekend. There's going to be some amazing speakers. We're also doing some really cool stuff in education. We're going to hear from some of the best homeschooling people out there. We're going to see some, hear from some alternative education sources. Um, we're going to hear from Bethel Tech. We're going to hear from just some really, really great stuff. So we're, we're going to have a whole bunch of across the whole spectrum of speakers. You don't want to miss this, regardless of where you're at in family or education. Yeah. This is going to be really, really good stuff. So we just encourage you guys to check it out. It's going to be about eight hours of content, digital. If you don't watch it, if you can't make the, the live digital event, then you're going to be able to watch it at any point forward as long as you have tickets. So you'll be able to go back and check that out at any point. So we really <laughs> encourage you guys to check this out. It's going to be awesome. And this is an area where enemy is totally on the move and attacking family and education. And so we just want to help equip you guys, help you to think about how to approach it and just give you the tools necessary to navigate everything that's happening in culture right now. Come on. I'm pumped. Bobby. <clears throat> so everyone be a part of it. Sign up. It's going to be amazing. This digital event interaction, you guys are going to enjoy being a part of it. And so, yeah, let's just pray um, and pray over all the speakers for this mm -hmm. event uh, because you can feel the excitement that's in the spirit. Lord, I just thank you that uh, reformation begins with the restoration of family. Um, it begins with high level educators who are creating culture for a new era. Lord, I'm just thanking you that you're raising up people all over the planet right now that prioritize family. They prioritize learning. They prioritize doing God's will, God's way. And so we just bless Greg. We bless Rhonda. We bless his family, his team, his ministry, Lord, for literally being on the front lines during what you're releasing in this new Reformation era. And so, Father, we just thank you for Restore 7. We thank you for Johnny and Elizabeth and the team there, uh, Chris and Justice, Lord, and this event that's about ready to get launched this weekend, Lord. We pray over all the speakers, all the family that's going to be online watching, God, all the family that's going to be enjoying the archives. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, just like we learned today, there'd be massive nuggets that we go away from and all across the world, suddenly, yeah. family culture is beginning to take new shape. People are intentionally wow. creating the future for their children's children's children, just like your Bible says. Lord, we live with that in mind. And so we bless that, we release that, and we're super excited, Lord, for what you're about to do in family and education all over the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Greg and Chris and Bobby, thank you so much for spending some time on this. Just appreciate you guys pouring into this, Greg, especially just everything that you guys are doing, as well as um, being willing to you know, be a speaker at this amazing event. So if you guys haven't registered, find the link in the description, click on the link. If you're listening to this five years from now, click on the link anyway and get the replay <laughs> access. Because I'm telling you, I is going to be absolutely fantastic. So fantastic. you don't want to miss it. Click on that thing and uh, get registered right away. And again, you get replay access. So even if for some reason you're not able to attend live, which I highly recommend you do, but if you can't, you'll still get access to everything after the fact. So hope to see you guys all there. Thank you for spending time with us today. We'll see you guys on the you next guys. Bless you guys. Thank you, Greg. Awesome. Appreciate it. You guys are incredible.